All right, so in this video, we're gonna have a look at how to set this character up. It is a um, seamless animation loop based on uh, just a handful a handful of keyframes. Uh, if I delete the layer, I'll show you what the animation looked like. So here, are the this is the, the, the full animation uh, on, well, it's, so it's just the wings and the rest is uh, secondary overlapping motion coming from this from this animation. So uh, to get started, let's go and grab the asset. It's part of Maya's uh, default asset library. Uh, it's called uh, this one right here. It's called a wasp. I'm just gonna put some joints on this guy so that we can assign markers to the joints. Uh, I'll just put them somewhere here. Uh, this part I will probably fast forward because it's not particularly interesting. Uh, it's not it's not specific to ragdoll either. It's just general uh, plotting of joints. So I'll just put a few here, a few like so, and so on and so forth. And there we go. So let me just skin this character real quick. We'll just let the the default weights should be fine. Uh, I typically typically go with the geodesic voxel because it sounds cool. And there we go, that should be fine. So now we have a, a rig. Okay, so I'm gonna go and assign some markers to this guy. Nothing special uh, from the bottom to the tail as well. I wanna go, I'm just gonna follow the joint hierarchy that I made. this there the default sizes are a bit large we will work that out in just a hot second there we go and i think uh, i'm just going to start with giving all of them a little less of a radius because it is too high something like that and then we can go to our manipulator tool and start tweaking these shapes so i need the body to be quite a bit bigger the tail too. Uh, this body is a bit misaligned. Something like this is, so that should be fine right there. And uh, by default, this is what we got. Just put it on the side so we can see. That looks fine. Let's make the hip into a um, inherit. So he just falls. So this is already pretty cool, I think, but we're gonna make a cycle. And for that, uh, because we don't really care about gravity in this case, we don't even care about the ground because we just want him to, sort of, uh, to be free floating. Uh, and if I were to set some keyframes on these wings right now, you can see that first of all, let's see what the axis is. Uh, so maybe the, the green one, that can be our flap axis. Um, let's set a keyframe. Let me go forward to say here. All right, so now we're getting some motion. Let's go and cycle this. So something like here. You want to cycle it and then maybe show the infinity so we can see what's going on. Uh, let me just close this content browser. And there we go. Well, okay, so now we're starting to have a, a cycle. Uh, obviously, we need to tweak these. Maybe we want both of them to be a bit lower. Um, maybe we want it to be a bit faster. Let's scale these. Something like that. And maybe the Z axis alone is not enough. Uh, this is a, it's a good time to, or when you plot the joints, you might want to also or, uh, sort of reorient these. <laughs> well, you know what, we're going we're gonna to stick with this. We're going to stick with this uh, because it makes the next point uh, even more clear. You can see how um, we do have kind of a cycle, but he's moving too much or rather he's he's rotating, right? Like he's, the first thing that happens is he sort of starts pointing up. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some world space uh, I'm going to hold on to his hip in world space, but I'm going to do it gently just so he, he stays in the position but still allows some motion. So if I just go to the hip, 
and I give it a behavior of post match in world space. So uh, immediately it will be a lot more stuck. So now it looks like something is actually holding on to him and that's that's too much. That's not what I want. So I'm going to lower that. Whoops, world point one. And so now he is he's going to hover in that general area. So we do have a a struggling bee. <laughs> Maybe he's just learning how to fly. Um, so the next thing uh, that I did for the original was I also pin the head. So I want the head to, uh, I want it to move around freely, but I want him to face in this direction. I want him to look ahead as though he's sort of, he's flying with intent uh, straight rather than um, just having a sort of being attached and doing whatever the body's doing. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing, almost. I'm going to have a, a post-match uh, of worlds, and we can let the default stiffness remain. So, so now he's he is looking forward, uh, look, looking straight ahead, but he's also maintaining that position in world space. So I don't want the position to be um, to be with. To be, I don't want him to hold the position, only the orientation. So I'm going to go to the attribute editor and go into the advanced pose tab. Uh, and here you can see the world pose attributes, and they're both uh, both translation and rotation are set to one. So he's both he's going to keep the world space position and rotation of the original uh, animation. I just want the rotation, so I'm going to remove the translation component. And so now he will be free to move his head, but he will still look in the in the direction in the forward direction. Uh, so now <laughs> it's like he's paddling. Like he's uh, rowing, he's, he's more of a swimming wasp. <laughs> uh, but this is fine. So I think we're, I think we're done. So the next part is to uh, record this to keyframes and then we're gonna loop it.